yes we'll stay straight away start from uh, the first case so please uh, listen carefully so that you are able to interact so this is a 6 year old boy who reported to uh, emergency services of a hospital with pain in abdomen for one day the pain is uh, reported to be severe by the parents at the central in location but there is no localization uh, so it, it is reported as a diffuse pain it is not associated with any fever vomiting abdominal distension and on uh, in past history there is history of recurrent episodes of similar kind of abdominal pain so let us see uh, let us ask from you what additional history would you like to take in this child to arrive at a diagnosis because this much details may not be sufficient enough to make a diagnosis or if you feel that it is sufficient enough to make a diagnosis you may not respond so it means that you all of you have to respond if you well uh, thanks dr dheeraj i i solicit response from all the participants please feel free to write in the chat box uh there is a question from neha is it associated with hard stools okay so very important to have uh, the history of uh, passage of stools not only hard stools but also loose stools or any recent change in pattern of stools it means means the increase in frequency of stools so uh, very right that to take history of so other questions are coming up to the research aggravating and relieving factors a uh, dietary history type of food he has taken uh, i am i am happy that people are writing in the chat box you can uh, i uh, maybe uh, regarding dietary history and type of food it may not be very important because here you are not dealing with the pain in abdomen of uh, one time it's, it's a recurrent uh, abdominal pain so uh, dietary causes are unlikely to cause such kind of abdominal pain i understand if there is one uh one time abdominal pain but yes uh, what happens to the abdominal pain the child when the child consumes food it is important relationship with feeding is important so i would say that it has no relationship to the food because another will... query dr dheeraj is radiation of pain is it important in this context yes radiation again uh, is an important history to ask for because uh, you can establish etiology of certain type of abdominal pain based on their uh, radiation to a particular yeah but i think you have already stated in your history that this is a centrally located and yes. diffuse so yes. it uh, it means that obviously there is no particular radiation or there is no particular characteristic it is a very diffuse pain so these were the various queries so can dr dheeraj you can uh, uh, tell the students what additional history they have already said about pain severity about the constipation and what else they should have asked So I am happy that uh, severity of pain is definitely important because if a pain uh, awakens the child from sleep or if it is uh, perceived perceived to be very severe, it is interfering with the child's routine activities. It's important uh, to pay attention to this kind of pain. Uh, constipation is very very important, and as and so is diarrhea. If there is a relationship of uh, 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 stool pattern to the abdominal pain, then you may. Uh, it may be an organic abdominal pain caused by something like inflammatory bowel disease or it may be even a functional abdominal pain the classification of functional abdominal pain will change depending on its relationship with stools so these are very important things to ask for and uh, then uh, if suppose uh, if i say that uh, nothing of this sort is present there is no diarrhea there is no constipation no, no relationship of uh, pain to the uh, food or pain to uh, there is no aggravating or relieving factors so uh, if uh, i provide you with all this history another important history uh, is whether the child is growing well whether the child is gaining weight well or not so it is very important if the child is failing to thrive definitely there is something more than the, this uh, functional abdominal pain so introducing it you to the this term functional abdominal pain So, uh, uh, Doctor Dinesh, can I ask a question yes, in between? Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, so students, you must have seen that this is a pain which is recurring. So, this is recurrent. Now, Doctor Dinesh has introduced a term functional abdominal pain uh, because I uh, always had learned recurrent abdominal pain. So, is there a difference between recurrent abdominal pain and functional abdominal pain? And if they are same, uh, uh, what what about this nomenclature? Can you just explain? Yes, sir. 
so recurrent abdominal pain as the name suggests is a recurrence of abdominal pain it means that if the pain episodes are more than uh, two times it's termed as recurrent abdominal pain so it this is an old old terminology uh, later on it was found that most of the children who have recurrent abdominal pain they are not found to have any disease that is how this term functional abdominal came uh, appeared into the practice and then the definitions keep on changing almost every 5 to 6 years the present definitions are based on the rome 4 criteria uh, and the this this is called as functional abdominal pain disorder so functional abdominal pain disorder means that if there are significant number of episodes of abdominal pain which would be about 4 episodes per month for uh, at least 2 months and if there is no apparent cause after detailed medical evaluation so as we know that most of the cases of uh, recurrent abdominal pain they are not found to have any disease so this is the term that after medical evaluation if you do not find any cause and the pain is recurrent it is frequent four episodes per month for at least two months this is termed as functional abdominal pain disorder now within the functional abdominal pain disorder there are uh, several sub classifications like you may have functional dyspepsia irritable bowel syndrome abdominal migraine and commonly most importantly functional abdominal pain not otherwise specified so uh, so going by this uh, history this child has a central location of abdominal pain it is recurrent uh, there is no radiation there is no aggravating factor uh, no fever vomiting abdominal distension relationship to the stools no constipation or diarrhea uh, growth should be all, also well preserved so this would classify uh, into functional abdominal pain uh, most likely of the not otherwise specified etiology uh dr dheeraj there is a query uh, coming from neha uh, in indian setting sir should we give albendazole empirically to these children so regarding treatment of uh, this uh, most of the times the worm infestations are not uh, cause of abdominal pain worm infestations are more often associated with abdominal pain uh, otherwise also worm infestations are common so unless the worm load uh, is massive it is unlikely to cause uh, recurrent abdominal pain but regarding treatment because it's a harmless treatment and otherwise also our country we have a anemia prophylaxis program in which we give six monthly doses of albendazole i would say there is no harm in uh, deworming a child who presents with recurrent abdominal pain just for the sake of expulsion of some worms um, maybe they may help in uh, prophylaxis of anemia and may um, relieve the anxiety of the parents because anxiety of the parents and child is also a cause of abdominal pain so it may relieve the anxiety that the child has passed worm and the cause may be gone so but, uh, neha you would also understand most of the time when parents come to you with children with the recurrent abdominal pain or so they would have already taken <laughs> doses of albendazole and they say sir do to de chuke hain but still it is not responding okay another question dr dheeraj is how to differentiate it from psychogenic or hysterical abdominal pain i would say there is nothing no terms like psychogenic or hysterical abdominal pain now so all these are classified as uh, recurrent abdominal pain or uh, sorry functional abdominal pain disorders so a functional abdominal pain disorder and if the child fits into the criteria for functional abdominal pain disorder the child is classified as having functional abdominal pain so okay. we are talking of a recurrent abdominal pain not of a missing episode so functional abdominal pain just to uh, reemphasize is defined as the pain occurring remaining there for more than 2 month of duration and there are more than 4 episodes per month and no cause is apparent after appropriate medical evaluation so that is the minimal criteria to define functional abdominal pain now last question in this session dr dheeraj uh, can you tell us what are the red flag signs we often say that there are red flag signs and uh, uh, presence of which indicate that it may not be functional uh, at all Uh, yes sir it is very important uh, to recognize that it is it would uh, all, as i said that most common cause of uh, such pains is functional abdominal pain but it would be a disaster if we classify all abdominal pain as having functional abdominal pain without detailed medical evaluation detailed medical evaluation means that you have to take a proper history 
to exclude for any uh, red flag sign which may suggest an organic etiology do a detailed examination including anthropometry and then you then only you are sure that there is nothing abnormal with the child so if there is a family history of disorders uh, like celiac disease like inflammatory bowel disease or peptic ulcer disease this becomes a red flag sign because the same child who appears to be having functional abdominal pain may be having an organic cause because his family history the child is predisposed to these disorders and this these could this could be the manifestation of early presentation of this disorder if there is a lo- well localized pain it means that uh, pain is well localized or it is radiating to a particular point it is unlikely to be uh, functional abdominal pain if there is there are symptoms of gi uh, upset the uh, dysphagia odynophagia if there is diarrhea especially nocturnal diarrhea if there is persistent vomiting occasional episode of vomiting may occur in uh, abdominal pain of unspecified etiology but if there is persistent vomiting if there is a blood loss from the gastrointestinal tract in form of hematemesis melina if there there are signs of uh, growth failure symptoms or signs of growth failure child is not gaining weight the height of the child is less or if there are signs which suggest other inflammatory disorders like if there is history suggestive of arthritis history suggestive of uh, perianal disease perianal fissures perianal tags oral ulceration all this suggest inflammatory bowel disease and if uh, there is unexplained fever if there is unexplained fever it could be something like uh, recurrent urinary tract infection also besides inflammatory bowel disease so all this history has to be taken in detail and the examination is to be performed in detail if there are abnormal examination findings like an abdominal lump or hepatosplenomegaly definitely this cannot be uh, organic uh, this cannot be functional abdominal pain. so the dictum is that you should not keep um, uh, functional abdominal pain as your first diagnosis uh, always try to rule out an organic cause and only then uh, look for these red flag signs i think there are two questions one is what is difference between RAP and functional dr dheeraj has specified that there is uh, now this is the new terminology is functional abdominal pain and earlier it was known as RAP so uh, there is no difference what is functional dyspepsia and abdominal migraine uh, so i think you can read this from the book the terminologies are well defined in the book so we won't go into these uh, details what is the lower age limit to diagnose a child with func- uh, functional abdominal pain dr dheeraj Uh, there is no as such lower age limit uh, specified for functional abdominal pain disorder but uh, any pain in infancy is unlikely to be functional abdominal pain disorder because it is mainly seen beyond children beyond 2 years of age so oh. thank you thank you dr dheeraj i think we just give 2 minutes to the students to just uh, i like you to write down just in the chat box the various red flags that dr dheeraj has uh, suggested so that it will remain in the record and you will also uh remember it so please type yes weight loss somebody has said so just type down the blood loss yes one of the red flag sign dr dheeraj has told bloody stools yes blood in stools all three hematemesis recurrent diarrhea failure to thrive associated joint pain ulcer excellent more 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 dil mange more persistent vomiting diarrhea ibd in family family history weight loss perianal fissure I my god pain awakes the child stunting perinatal tags excellent all red flags sare bata diye aapne great uh, organomegaly good fever nahi aaya abdominal lump growth failure unexplained fever excellent excellent thank you thank you very much jondis i that's fabulous fabulous i think we go on to the second case dr dheeraj uh, from Uh, the recurrent abdominal before we go to the second case i'll just uh, uh, like to tell you that uh, such cases if you ask me what essential diagnostic workup should be done so i would say that if you have done a detailed history and uh, medical evaluation it means examination and it doesn't suggest any uh, red flag sign it suggests a functional abdominal pain disorder especially if there is a trigger like the triggers could be there is a recent birth in the family shifting rivalry there is family conflict or there could be uh, examination or school related stress uh, definitely you do not need any uh, work up you getting the routine ultrasonography routine stool test routine um, evaluations for uh, uh, celiac disease this is not warranted provided you have done the detailed medical evaluation including anthropometry and there is no red flag sign at all so no investigation is required 
only detailed medical evaluation does not mean detailed investigation. It is detailed medical evaluation including history and physical.